Hello, John Finley, Kevin Coyle, May 2018 market update. Maybe start with a quick recap on how we've done year to date, John, and over the last year. Year to date, we're about flat, uh, but year over year, we're still up double digits, about 14% in the U.S. Uh, the market hit a, a new high on January 26th, but we're down about 6% from that. We've had, and had a lot more volatility, more volatility than usual. You know, we were kind of lulled into a false sense of security maybe in 2017 with very, very little fluctuations and mostly up days, um, but this would be more normal. Right. If you look back historically, you're gonna have a lot more of these types of down days during the course of the year. Mm -hmm. um, the global backdrop, uh, growth-wise, um, what does that look like? Still very supportive. I mean, we have uh, global synchronized growth. Uh, maybe 70% of uh, developed countries are in a, uh, a pretty strong expansionary economic situation, which is good, um, and low uh, inflation. So it's a very supportive uh, economic backdrop. So there are some fears out there, which we'll talk about in a second, um, but the correction that we had, maybe 6% down from the lows, combined with increased earnings, part of that from the tax cuts, but from historical measures, the market would appear to be fairly valued at this point in time. Right, but forward uh, price earnings were right about at the average, mm -hmm. long-term average. And uh, we're expecting earnings in the U.S. to uh, be up about 20% year over year, 25% on earnings per share basis. And revenue top line growth is still pretty healthy at 7%. So we talked about potential fears out there of inflation, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the other one, which has been since this recovery started, it's been a long but slow recovery. A lot of people think, well, it's nine years, it's what, the second longest mm -hmm. uh, expansion, um, that it can't have legs much longer, it's got to be running out soon. What are your thoughts on that? Well, this has been a, a, a different recovery coming out of the financial crisis than uh, the other post-war uh, recessions that we've had. We bounced back much quicker before, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we've just been plodding along in about 2% or so real GDP growth. And the reason for that is we've got the two components of GDP growth are, are population growth and uh, productivity. And both of those are relatively low uh, rates of growth right now. So, so if you it, look at the numbers, the, the length of the expansion has been long, but the degree of the recovery has, been, has not been as significant. Right. I mean, we've seen unemployment continue to drop. And that's creating, you know, some issues, uh, maybe some labor shortages in certain industries. Um, but we're not seeing that really show up in the inflation figures. Not yet. Point. So we're f afraid about the length of the recovery, and we're afraid about inflation, but we're not really seeing signs. Right. That those are rearing their heads. Just right. Yet. I mean, oil oil is up to seventy dollars a barrel now, and uh, lumber prices are up. So there are there are indicators that uh, inflation may be on the rise. The Federal Reserve said recently that that uh, there inflation in the U.S. is approaching their 2%. Uh, uh, well, so the Fed so. has been taking precautionary action, uh, and they've been raising short-term right. rates. So you have that going on. Um, you also have the Federal Reserve trying to unwind its balance sheet from the quantitative easing from the bonds they purchased since the recovery. Mm -hmm. And then you also have record deficits um, on the horizon. Uh, this all maxes up potentially inflationary as well, correct? Well, certainly it's going to put pressure on interest rates as the Fed uh, unwinds the balance sheet and the government has to sell bonds to, to finance a trillion dollar deficit for the next five years. Um, but the bond market is, is not really reacting yet to any uh, higher inflation expectations. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, it, may, it may be a bit concerned that the Fed will overshoot. So, so you have this balancing act going on where you have potential inflation, but the bond market's saying it's not seeing it. So rates have gone up, but the yield curve is still relatively flat. Mm -hmm. So the bond market's saying that's looking more potential of recession as opposed to inflation. Right. But then you put that together with the global backdrop, the, the earnings and the economic climate is still positive. So it's kind of a different recipe of this Goldilocks scenario from a couple of years. It's all kind of to be mixing together where it's kind of steady as you go kind of a scenario. Right. It doesn't appear that, uh, from what we can tell, the indicators that we watch, that there's a recession around the corner, certainly. And uh, the backdrop, again, is very supportive. Uh, 
uh, from global e economic perspective. So. With all that being said, stick to your plan. Um, but the volatility, I would imagine, will continue to be present because there is some uncertainty as to some of these issues that are out there. So those are the things we'll be looking for going forward. Until our next update, enjoy.